All right, so you just picked up a brand new cap and ball revolver and then you pull the hammer back and you see that the cone or the nipple on the cylinder does not line up perfectly with the barrel. This means that we have a timing issue. So if we take a look at a cap and ball revolver, I will first show the YouTube uh, people that this is unloaded, it is not capped. You can see daylight through all of the cylinders and we put this on the frame, which I will do off camera. And just so YouTube knows, we are not going to be disassembling a revolver on screen and we are not going to be altering a revolver in any way. All we're doing is fixing a safety issue uh, that should have been corrected at the factory and this sometimes just needs a little fit and finish to get it correct. And then we have a black powder revolver. If we pull the hammer back, the timing issue would happen at the end of the hammer pull, but I can't recreate it um, because mine is fixed. But let's say you end up like that so that the cone or the nipple here is not perfectly lined up between the hammer and the barrel. You would have a timing issue. Now your timing issue could be that your cylinder over travels, which means it goes past where it's supposed to go, or it could be a issue where it under travels, which means it doesn't quite get there. Either way, if you, when you pull the hammer back all the way, if you twist the cylinder with your hand and the cylinder clicks into place, either going forward or backwards, then you have a timing issue. The issue that you're going to face the most is having a cylinder that over travels. This 1849 pocket model is a prime example of an issue that I had and it would over travel right from the factory. Now to test if you have a timing issue, you're gonna to wanna to do two things. First of all, you're going to want to pull the hammer back very, very slowly and then check at the end of each of the hammer pulls to see if the cylinder is locked into place. If it doesn't wiggle and it is completely locked, you should be good to go with the first step. The next one is you want to pull the hammer back fast, like your life depended on it, and try the same thing. A lot of times the revolvers can function properly with a slow hammer pull, but once you pull it back fast, then that kind of gets rid of any of the um, things that it was trying to hide by pulling it back slowly. But do that for at least two cylinder rotations, uh, going slowly and two going fast. If yours works, then you are good to go. There's no need to watch the rest of this video. But if you notice that yours is over traveling, you're in the right place. Let's get to how to fix this and what I see other people doing that technically does work, but I would do something completely different because um, it's a costly mistake if you do it the other way. So this 1849 pocket model, I got it right from the factory. I liked everything about it for the most part. Um, it had some things that I had to fix, but one of the things was the timing. If I pulled it back slowly, everything was perfect. No problems whatsoever. If I pulled it back quickly, Every single time it would over travel by nearly a quarter inch. It was pretty horrendous. So what do we do to fix it? I cannot show you how to disassemble the revolver anymore on YouTube, but what I can do is show you the parts here. So we have the hammer, which has a cam here. Um, if I can get this to focus for you, it has this little cam right here that the cylinder bolt stop will um, kind of ride on. Now this is the cylinder bolt stop. It has basically this is the bolt part right here that pops up in the frame of the revolver and it locks into the little indentations um, along your cylinder here, which holds the cylinder in place and keeps it from moving. And then the cylinder bolt stop also has these two fingers. And if you look closely with the fingers here, if I can get this to focus, one of the fingers is a little thinner and it has different cuts on it. One is cut is on like a 30 degree, and then the other ones are all 90 degrees. Uh, the other finger is just straight 90 degree cuts. So what you're going to want to do, what you'll see on several videos is that they will tell you to fix over travel, you're gonna to wanna to remove metal from this cam here on the hammer. And I highly discourage that for one of two reasons. Basically metal does need to get removed. However, you can remove it from either the hammer or from the cylinder bolt stop. If you screw up the hammer and you take off too much metal, this hammer by itself is $50 plus tax plus shipping. If you screw this part up and take off too much metal, you're looking at 10 or $15 plus tax plus shipping. To me, it's a no brainer. Take metal off of the cylinder bolt stop before you take any metal off of the hammer. Now to fix this problem, you don't need much. All you need is just a little bit of fine sandpaper and then basically an adhesive where you can glue that sandpaper down onto a wooden block. Just a two inch by two inch wooden block is all you need. When that's done, it's going to be a tedious process of taking off a little metal, putting your revolver back together, testing, taking it apart, and then doing the same process over and over and over again. You're going to need to remove metal 
on the angle that's cut like on a 30 degree and a little bit off of the top. And I recommend just doing like 10 light strokes, keeping everything true to the angles that are cut from the factory on that sandpaper. When you do 10 strokes at a time and you put it back together and you test, you'll notice that that cylinder gap will get less and less and less and less until it falls into place. Be careful not to remove too much metal because once you do that, you will have cylinder under travel and then there's nothing you can do except buy a new piece. I had to perform this procedure about eight times of taking the revolver apart and putting it back together. Yes, it was tedious. It took about two hours, it seems like, from start to finish, but I did get everything correct. Now to test again to see if everything is good to go, I recommend pulling that hammer back 100 times slow and pulling it back 100 times fast and see how it works. In the end, right before I had it right, I got about two errors out of 100. And I knew once I took this apart one more time, I think I only ran it across the sandpaper about two or three strokes and I uh, put it back together and I've never had an issue with this revolver and its timing ever since. So that's it guys. Once again, you feel free if you want to take any metal off of the hammer, you're welcome to do that. That's a big gamble and a big risk in my opinion um, for $50. When all is said and done, you're probably gonna be looking at $65 for a new hammer to get shipped to you or you can take your uh, gamble with this and take off a little metal with the cylinder bolt stop. And if you screw that up, you're only looking at about 20 bucks that you gotta pay. So do what you like. You're a big boy, you're a big girl, whatever you wanna do. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and take it easy.